Hi everyone, this is Benedek here, very welcome to my channel. In this video I will show you how to implement a simple rewind system in Unity. A rewind system, or with another word, a replay or playback system, is a simple mechanism uh, and with using it you can record player or character movements in your game and later for a trigger, for example a button click, or a keyboard key press, you can automatically replay those recorded movements to your players. Ok, let's see it in Unity together. Ok, here I am in Unity. I have uh, created a simple empty uh, Unity project for this demo uh, with version 2021.3.9.f1 and I used a simple 3D project template for this. So uh, I'm gonna just set up the scene real quick. Uh, I'm going to create a cylinder, uh, player will stand on it. And I'm aligning the view, okay. Uh, I will uh, align with view uh, uh, on the main camera so that uh, now main camera renders this view. Uh, I will create a folder for materials I'm creating a material for this one called black mat for example and I am going to assign it a black color and I place it in the cylinder I can fine tune it as I like okay uh, let's rename that uh, by pressing F2 I will rename it to main scene and I reload it I'm going to create a capsule for our player but it is huge so uh, I need only the tenth of it okay now I will place it in the top of it, or on the top of it, right, like that, and I will uh, of course uh, rename it with F2 to be player. Okay, uh, now I am going to remove the capsule collider uh, f from the cylinder and I will place it, uh, place a box collider in, on that one. and for sake of simplicity I am going to also place a box collider in the on the player and besides uh, as I want to move it uh, I will place a rigid body on it with gravity enabled okay now it holds it okay now as our scene is set up uh, for this demo let's uh, create the code for this project uh, so I'm going to create a new folder called scripts folder here I'm going to create a new C sharp script let's say player controller I select the player on the scene and on the inspector panel uh, I am dragging and assigning this uh, player controller script to it and probably I'm going to check something uh, at edit uh, preferences. Yep, uh, I need to set uh, Visual Studio uh, as a default uh, code editor and I regenerate the project files for it. OK. And at the assets open C sharp project, I can now open the project for this. Or I am going to open up this player controller. I will erase the start method and this command. And now I'm going to create a simple uh, player controller so that um, we can control uh, that uh, little uh, capsule or our player with uh, simple arrow keys. So for this I will use the fixed update uh, because that's the best uh, for you know these uh, physical movements uh, and I will check for input key uh, get key key code and let it be 
first the right arrow. And if the right arrow is pressed, uh, I am going to uh, transform translate with vector free right times time fixed delta time. <coughs> so this is how I can move it to the right on a uh, uh, right arrow press and of course I need to handle the left arrow press as well. Here I will use the vector free dot left as a direction vector and here I'm going to use the upper row and uh, on the upper row we will use the forward direction and here the down arrow should be go there uh, going there and here uh, I will use the back direction. Okay, let's uh, check it real quick if it's working or not. Hit play. Yes, it is working, though currently I am pressing the uh, forward uh, direction, so the up arrow and now the down arrow. So it is working as expected, uh, though uh, the directions are not okay. This is because uh, it has to do with Unity's directions. So uh, again, I am checking uh, it real quick. Yes, uh, so this is the forward direction, meaning that we have to rotate it. So I select the player on the scene view. Uh, I click the rotation tool and I can drag it and rotate it like that until I think it is good. But of course, uh, uh, you can, you know, uh, test it uh, multiple with uh, playing it multiple times. Yeah. This is the forward, this is the back, uh, this is the left arrow, this is the right. So uh, player movement is now set up correct. Set, uh, yes, so it has been set up correctly. And after that, uh, I'm going to uh, do the, reco uh, the recording uh, part of this uh, Rewind system. Okay, but first uh, I'm going to create a bool uh, for the rewinding called is rewinding currently. And it will be, of course, uh, set to false by default. And I only want to happen these movement. So I only want these movements to happen if it is not rewinding. So not rewinding. So all of this code goes to there. And and if it is not rewinding, meaning that we are recording, then uh, we have to add these positions to a collection. We could use a list for this, but a stack data structure is better for this, I think. So I will use a stack of vector free here, uh, and it will be recorded player positions. Okay, now I need uh, an awake function. Uh, which is called at the very beginning of our program. And here I am going to just initialize it to an empty new stack of vector free. Uh, and the benefit of uh, stacks are that uh, you can add to it uh, just like to uh, a list, but now uh, you won't uh, use the add method, but the push method, which is uh, exactly doing the same. Uh, and you can retrieve the always the first element easily with using the pop uh, method of a stack and pop also erases uh, the first element as well as uh, adding uh, that uh, its value back uh, for us so that we can you know always uh, retrieve the first element and 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 delete that uh, with can be very beneficial for our use case, I think. So here, after moving the player to any direction, I am going to use the push uh, method of that stack, which is again uh, the very same of uh, the uh, stack, uh, like uh, if it would be a list. Uh, on a list, we would use odd method for adding a uh, new element to the back of it, but uh, now we are using push. And what I am going to add here is transform.position. Transform.position means the current position of the player. So I am adding or pushing the transform position or the current position of the player to the recorded player position. 
collections uh, collection which is a stack okay uh, and it happens uh, whenever it is not rewinding meaning that we are recording but else when we are not uh, you know record uh, yeah, so when we are not recording, but we are rewinding here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a vector free uh, next uh, position to replay. So it will be the next position uh, which we want to, you know, simulate or, or replay. Uh, and it will be the recorded player's positions pop. A pop, uh, as I have mentioned, is a method that gets the first element of the collection always the first element and then deletes that uh, first element so at the next iteration the the original second element uh, will be the first uh, and uh, and again and again it will be deleted and uh, given back and i am going to assign the transform position the so the current position of the player will be set to this uh, next position to replay this way we can easily uh, replay and rewind all of these movements created by our players. But one thing to implement is that I need uh, this uh, variable to, uh, to have a changing value, obviously. So I am going to create a public uh, void method called uh, start rewinding, for example. And here, the only thing I need to do is pr uh, set it to true. Okay. Now uh, going back to Unity and I will create a button for this rewinding purpose. Uh, okay, uh, it's asking me to, impl uh, to import uh, TMP, which is Text Mesh Pro. So I am going to import that. Okay, it is imported uh, after that. Uh, by the way, if you want to see this, you can either uh, click that and y you see that, uh, but it is easier to go to the game uh, view and, and uh, uh, it shows uh, the button there. Uh, I want to assign it to the uh, upper left corner, so I'm going for that. I will apply a kind of podding or, or sorry, margin with, let's say, 25. Let it be a li little bit bigger. I will assign a dark color to it. It will be bold and it will have a, a red color. OK, and it will say replay. OK, like that. Cool. Uh, now on the buttons, uh, on click comp uh, button components, on click uh, field, you can uh, uh, drag the player in and we ha we can use the player controllers start rewinding method so whenever this button gets clicked the player controllers start rewinding method uh, gets called meaning that is rewinding currently will be set to true and if it's true then uh, here it goes it will replay uh, those positions but uh, here can be a problem actually uh, we are not uh, checking if this uh, re recorded player positions containing any values. Uh, so if you uh, use pop uh, for many times, uh, pop not just gives us back the uh, first element, but it also deletes the first element. So we need to check uh, the recorded uh, player positions to be bigger. Uh, so it's count to be bigger than zero, meaning that uh, it should have elements in it. Uh, all right. Let's test out our solution. Okay, I'm going to just create some random movements here in the scene and now I am pressing replay. Yes, and you can see it is moving uh, by itself automatically. So our replay system is working just, expect, uh, just as expected. Okay, guys, uh, I hope you liked it. If so, please consider subscribing if you haven't did that already. And please uh, give me a thumbs up. Also, if you have any questions, please write it down in the comment section. I will be trying to focus on that. Uh, have an absolutely fantastic day wherever you are. Be safe out there. Bye.